So I've managed to build a $50,000 investment portfolio. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did it. My investing journey started back in 2017 when I read this book by Tony Robbins called Money Master the Game. And whilst reading this book, I learned a few important concepts about money, about generating wealth, and about investing in the stock market. But what stands out to this day is the story about Theodore Johnson. He was a UPS worker who never earned more than $14,000 per year, who adopted the concept of paying himself first by saving 20% of his income and putting it into an investment account every single month. Theodore then let his money compound over the course of the next five years, leaving him with $70 million in wealth during retirement. This very story certainly inspired me and also left me somewhat baffled at the thought of someone earning less than $14,000 per year but being able to retire with over $70 million. After all, Albert Einstein did say that compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world, but perhaps I just didn't realize exactly how powerful it is. Now, at risk of ruining a good story, inflation certainly does have a big part to play in this story, and that $14,000 back in the early 1900s was obviously worth a hell of a lot more back then than it would be today. But nonetheless, it's still an inspiring story. And due to this story, it certainly inspired me to get started investing. Following in the footsteps of the likes of Theodore by actually allocating and investing a percentage of my income every single month, which I did back in 2017, by investing my first £400 into my Vanguard UK stocks and shares ISA. I continued to invest that amount of money every single month until the value of the portfolio gradually grew over time, where it reached a maximum value of £19,200 at its absolute peak. From just £400 to close to £20,000 in just just over three years certainly isn't so bad at all. Now, of course, this was certainly helped on by a period of unprecedented market growth, but also adopting the habit of continuously investing into the portfolio every single month without fail. Now, despite making some slight changes to this investment portfolio quite recently, the Vanguard portfolio as of right now sits with unrealized gains of £6,221. Now, the best thing about investing in this way is when you invest a percentage of your income every single month and have that automatic automatically set up so the transaction automatically comes out of your bank account and gets completely invested into your stocks and shares ISA account, it's a completely passive way of investing. It takes minimal time and effort to manage. You can almost set it and forget it and kind of come back in 5, 10, 15 or 20 years from now and pretty much see how you've done. And truth be told, the kind of set it and forget it mentality is probably the best approach to investing for the vast majority of people. But in 2020, I decided that I was young enough to spice up my investing strategy. And as a result, I decided to start investing into individual stocks along with a little bit of cryptocurrency too. Now, because Vanguard don't offer the ability to invest into individual stocks, I opened an account with Trading212, picked a number of stocks which I wanted to invest into and took the very same approach Every single month, I cost averaged my way into the stocks in which I decided to invest in. And to begin with, I took the decision to only invest into my sure bets, the kind of blue chip stocks that you'd probably expect. These were the stocks that I'm most confident about and that I wanted to have a bigger overall allocation within my investment portfolio weighted towards these stocks. These stocks in question are the likes of Apple, Tesla and Amazon, who still to this day make up over 65% of my total individual stock portfolio. And whilst I'm on that point, an investing tip which I once heard with Warren Buffett, which I want to share with you guys, is that your seventh best idea is unlikely to be your best. So it's important to invest in your highest conviction stocks and not deviate too much from the highest conviction plays which you have and not get too overexcited, perhaps even a little bit overwhelmed at the thought of having hundreds, if not thousands of different equities on some of these apps like Trading 2 on 2, which you could potentially invest in, but possibly ruin the overall returns within your investment portfolio along the way. But having said that, I did go on to make a few more additional, more calculated risks, you could say, by investing into a few more speculative stocks. And as a result, I started to invest into companies like Palantir Technologies, Tattoo Chef, as well as Unity Software. And well, you guys can see that my safer bets have certainly performed quite well, whilst my speculative investments certainly haven't performed all too great. So as of right now, I'm certainly sat on it within my 
my individual stock portfolio a pretty mixed bag of winners and losers. Nonetheless, the winners certainly still outstrip the losers with the likes of Apple and Tesla certainly being the biggest positions within my individual stock portfolio and certainly reaping the rewards. Which is certainly where I've had a few more learnings from my investment portfolio because the individual stocks which I've held, especially the more speculative ones over the course of the past six months, have really taken a beating. And that first learning is that good times simply don't last forever. We've obviously had a humongous bull run over the course of the past 18 months since the pandemic lows of March 2020. But in the past six months, stock market returns haven't been all too great for investors, and especially not for the growth stock investors. The broader S&P 500 is down 4% in the past six months. Whilst Kathy Wood's flagship innovation ETF, which predominantly invests in your kind of high growth technology stocks, is down 54%. So it's been pretty tough conditions for pretty much all investors out there over the course of the past six months. And with that, another way which I've kind of been able to maintain the value within this portfolio is to simply stay the course as well as buy the dip too. It can be easy to want to pull out of the stock market when times get tough and potentially hold the money in cash or perhaps even look to reinvest the money elsewhere in order to seek a higher return on investment. But if you think back to Theodore's story at the start of the video, for the most part, you're pretty much better off staying invested in the market, staying the course over the long term, and then simply buying the dip when the opportunities present themselves. This is certainly what I've done over the course of the past four or five years, and it's certainly paid off for me so far. And whilst obviously some of my positions haven't played out all too well, especially in the past six months, as well as I'd like them to anyway, hopefully over the course of the next three to five years, I'm hopeful that market conditions can certainly take a turn for the better, and provide me with the return on investment in which I'm expecting. So all in all, when you combine my Trading212 portfolio with my Vanguard UK portfolio, I'm sat on an individual stock portfolio plus some diversified funds in there too, to the tune of just over £30,000. At which point I kind of got a little bit comfortable with the total value within my investment portfolio and then decided to take on a little bit more risk and started to delve into the world of cryptocurrency. After all, Bitcoin is certainly the best performing asset class over the course of the past decade. So it kind of made sense to have a small percentage, a small allocation within my overall investment portfolio allocated to the likes of Bitcoin along with some other cryptocurrencies which I'm personally bullish on. Now when I'm talking about investing into cryptocurrency it's not just kind of looking at the price and hoping the price will go up, obviously whilst that is certainly a fact to it, I'm not just purely looking for a quick return from investing into cryptocurrency and instead for me it's more of a bet on the future of technology and potentially the future of finance too. And whilst it's still very much an unknown as to whether Bitcoin and cryptocurrency more broadly is going to be successful or not, for me personally, I'm young enough to still take a few more calculated risks within my investment portfolio. And because of that, I'd rather have a little bit of calculated allocation to cryptocurrency and at least be at the party rather than kind of wait for things to play out and then potentially miss out what could be a fantastic opportunity. So with that, I started buying crypto on exchanges like Coinbase as well as Crypto.com with my Coinbase holdings pretty much being made up of Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP and over on Crypto.com predominantly made up of the Crypto.com coin which is the Crow token or the Crow coin along with a little bit of Ethereum as well as Cardano too. Now if you guys are still thinking about looking to build out perhaps an allocation within your investment portfolio towards cryptocurrency then be sure to click on those links down in the description below to get some free crypto when you sign up to both Coinbase and Crypto.com. Now you might be thinking at this point Mitch you've obviously managed to build up your investment portfolio to about $50,000 but but how do you still continue to manage and have full oversight of all of your investments when you've got all of your investments in multiple different places? And that certainly has been a true bugbear of mine, especially when I'm trying to make videos in the most simplistic format. So because of that, I've actually built out an automated portfolio tracker. It tracks all of my diversified funds, stocks and cryptocurrencies too. And I wanted to share it with you guys in today's video. So as you guys can see, this is my full portfolio tracker and it shows you the full in-depth breakdown of all of the holdings which I have from diversified funds to US listed stocks to UK listed stocks and my cryptocurrency holdings as well.
It shows you my portfolio allocation on the bottom right hand side where I have currently a 91.23% allocation towards my pure investments. And then I've got about an 8.7% allocation towards my more speculative assets in the form of cryptocurrency. And every single day I come to the top of the screen and look at the overall overview of my portfolio with the number of shares I have invested in, the total amount invested, the current value, my annual income, which is generated from dividends, the total gain and loss, as well as the percentage gain or loss as well. And I simply copy that dashboard over into my analysis tab, which you can see allows me to track my investments every single day. I can track the change in value of my investment portfolio from a pure pound and pence point of view, as well as a percentage point of view as well. And then on the right hand side, I have all of my graphs, which include pretty much everything that I pretty much want to see. It's a way for me to manage all of my investments without having to log into five or six different investment apps along the way. Now, I know many of you guys have seen some elements of this tracker before and have certainly wanted me to make it public. So today I've decided to make this tracker public, which you can get a copy of by clicking the link down in the description below. When you pick up a copy of the tracker, it comes with a full tutorial breakdown of me explaining exactly how to use the tracker, all of the formulas and all of the backend workings behind it, along with which bits are automated and which bits need manual entries too. So that pretty much is how I managed to build my $50,000 investment portfolio and how I actually actively manage that portfolio on a day by day and a week by week basis. Now stocks and crypto aren't the only investment which I'm planning to make this year and there might be one more asset class that I plan to add to the mix as well. And if you guys want to find out what that is, then be sure to click on this video here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next one.